who is completely dead in their sin to life in Jesus Christ, and that requires intentional, strategic effort and ultimately faith on their part in, in the blood of Jesus Christ. And so as we bring CPR to them, the first stage of CPR that we're going to talk about is cultivating. Okay, so this is where we mix metaphors, because now we're talking farming, okay, which I don't know about, about our gardening. <laughs> all right? But as we get into the cultivating, all right, this is the, this is the part that is kind of tilling up the soil, getting the rocks out, you know, getting the roots out, just grinding it, grinding it out, man. You're out there breaking a sweat. You're, you're, you're plowing new ground. And that's how this, this, that's how this event fits into the overall big picture of urban impact. That there are going to be people invited to this event who are who could potentially be callous or cool to the gospel. And all they'll really know that day is they're coming to, to play some football. They're coming to meet the Pittsburgh Steelers. And so we, we kind of um, leverage the name of the Pittsburgh Steelers to draw men in, to, to allow them to come into this program that is led by Jesus Christ, that is honoring to Jesus Christ, that is cultivating a spirit of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ hovering over it, and believing that as we as we allow people to experience the love of Christ in, in just providing a need, a cultivated, you know, cultivating an environment where we provide a need, which is, hey, I have a need to meet the Pittsburgh Steelers. I have a need to play football. That as we do that, we're faithful to do that in love, that it can open up doors for the gospel. Now, there are also events that we run, and and programs that we run throughout the year that are more plant events, okay, where you're planting seeds of the gospel. You're literally preaching the good news of Jesus Christ from the scriptures. You're, you're, you're challenging people where they're at their sin, and you're calling them to repentance, and you're, you're proclaiming the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? This, is, this is not the main purpose of this event. If that happens, that is, that is a bonus, and that is, that is what we would hope for, but what, what happens is we actually put it in the court of the, uh, the Steelers players to give their testimony, because they are the ones, they're the name that, that drew the people there that day, so for us to draw the people with the Steelers name and sort of backdoor and go, okay, now we're going to come in and, and say, say our piece, that's not what we're trying to do, kind of, kind of uh, switch a ruin it on them, right, is that what we pray for, what we hope for, and what we what we always long for is for a stealer who has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ to come in and be willing to share their testimony. And that's, that's gone really well some years, and that's been challenging some years to get a, a clear articulation of the gospel. Okay? And so I'm just telling you if, you, if you're used to being around Urban Impact, the first time I came to the football clinic event, I was kind of like, huh, oh, it's interesting. Like we didn't really talk that much about Jesus. It was kind of good, it was fun. All right, and there's there's some good stuff going on, but there wasn't a, a real aggressive gospel message that kind of went out there. And uh, if you know me, I'm, I got a little hint of aggression in me. And, uh, and so all <laughs> yeah. I have to say, yeah, I was kind of taken aback a little bit, and and, uh, and until I understood this, that you know at times you know, we have to cultivate these relationships, earn the right to be heard, you know, give people a chance to come in and, and to experience a, a, a really great event and. And then, as that happens, then they can, they can have an opportunity to respond to that. And I was reminded of this. I was preparing for something this year um, at my house. And when I was preparing for something, I was pulling out pictures from a kid that I've mentored since the fourth grade. And as I was pulling out these pictures, what struck me is he started attending our programs in the fourth grade. And he now lives in my home during the week and goes to a Christian school and he's moving in the right direction. And the Lord has got hold of his life and he is faithful follower of Jesus Christ and to the glory of God and because of the body of Jesus Christ coming around him, uh, this young man is, is somebody worthy of being proud of in the kingdom of God. I'll tell you that. All I have to say though, as I was going through the pictures, I was flipping through the pictures, I stumbled across a picture from the, the Steelers Clinic from must have been kin kindergarten, first grade, second grade, where that was really his first exposure to urban impact. That was the first time he ever did any kind of Sports thing. We didn't know him because he just came, but he, every year he just came to the clinic, and then sometime along the line at the clinic, he heard about baseball, and then that's how it all goes. 
See how that works? Yeah. So as I saw that, I was like, okay, I understand this. So this this makes sense to me now, nine years later. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so all that to say, it, it, you don't know the seeds that you're going to plant. You know, you don't know the. And you know what? So, some of the soil it's not ready for seeds, and that's the point. You can you can plant seeds for the gospel on June second. You understand me? Here, you can reap for the gospel on June 2nd. There, are, there could be people there that day that if, if the Lord leads you to a conversation with a kid and you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them, you preach the good news to Jesus to them, and you call them into repentance, and they, you, know, you reap a, a spiritual harvest with them, please do that. Okay, I'm, I'm encouraging you. I'm saying go after that. Do that thing. God will be pleased with that. Okay? That is very possible. It's very, it, it's very, you know, very very uh, likely that that could happen if you would be obedient to step out and do that. But it's not the point. The point of this event, the overall event, isn't to reap. To re we're not going to do an altar call. You know, we're not going to ask Beecham to, to have everybody come forward and have Kumbaya playing in the background or anything like that. This is going to be, this is going to be a, a cultivating event. So we're not asking people to raise their hands and say, today I'm following Jesus or anything like that unless the Holy Spirit comes in and does that to the Steelers, but um, all that to say, what we are what we are saying though is that there could be people there whose ground is too hard for seed to even fall, okay? And certainly too hard. They have a heart of stone, and it needs to be turned into flesh. It's certainly too hard to really respond and to and to reap any kind of spiritual harvest from the gospel. So what we're really trying to do is get your pitchforks out, get your uh, or your pickaxes out, get your Get your hose out and get your shovels out and, and be ready to just cultivate relationships. Just, just be in a relationship that day. Smile, embrace people, give them high fives, tell them how awesome they are at the different drills. And uh, if we do that and we pray a lot, the Lord will win the day. Understand that. We're going to spend some time praying today because, because the battle is won on our knees. And that's, that's not just a, a cute little catchy phrase. That's the truth. Okay? And we have to fight spiritual battles with spiritual weapons. And so we're going to spend some time praying for, for the kids that come today, praying for the Steelers, praying for anybody that the Lord wants to do or work in. Before we do that, we're going to go on to some more slides. Any questions before we, before we move on? Yes, that's when you talk about cultivate. Are we going to uh, talk about what else they can do through Urban Impact? And I'm assuming yes. I've only been there one year and I don't remember. But uh, about their next step, they want to have a fun day. We do basketball. We do some things all through the summer. We've got arts programs. Is that going to be available to them? That's certain. That's certainly part of it. Great question, and you're thinking the right way. We we don't say a ton from the stage. We do say hey, we're Urban Impact, and we have performing arts and athletics and education programs that we want you to be a part of. Uh, and we have a table set up that people can go talk to people. And we do get a lot of sign-ups for program on that particular day. The other thing that happens, though, is you know we've had as many as 500 people come to this in the past, and so when those people come, they fill out their names, they fill out their addresses, and then we can send them information to learn about Urban Impact. They get a postcard in the mail for the age-appropriate programs that they're a part of, and so it becomes a feeder into you know, these different programs. So even if they don't if they don't connect that day and really understand going away that day, they don't really understand. Oh, I can go to Urban Impact. They'll at least get something in the mail that says, "Hey, thanks for coming to the clinic. Here's some programs you can be a part of." Cool. Great question. All right. Well, you might be worried because I'm only through the first couple slides, but uh, the, next, <laughs> the next several should go a little quicker. All right. So, next, uh, this is just a um, request by the, the Steelers organization, the players, and these guys, you know. And interacting with them a little bit. They seem real low, laid back, and low key and everything. But um, but it gets to be a real challenge to have a lot of autographs and a lot of pictures and that can end up being the whole event. And uh, so we asked the, the kids and families not to not to take pictures or autographs and allow them to just run the stations. Then we also ask the same for you know the, uh, the volunteers. So don't bring your jersey, you know, under your shirt, but you just sign right here real quick or you know whatever you're gonna do. Um, you know, leave that stuff at home. This isn't a chance to get your your jersey or your football autograph and those kinds of things. So I uh, apologize if that was 
an expectation that you had, but, but I just am here just watching. So. <laughs> Next, um, you know, all volunteers and kids must have a waiver signed and wear a wristband to enter the field. So we'll get you guys to sign those waivers that day. Uh, there's a whole registration process. Those of you who are going through the registration process that uh, Sarah is going to do as a breakout after this. But um, important thing for you to know is that there'll be different color wristbands. And if you see kids wandering at any time and they don't know where they're supposed to go, there is a wristband that's given them. And then there's a, a group that they're supposed to be with as we explain how that all works a little bit later. Um, just be encouraged to kind of connect those kids into those, those areas. Uh, On-field participation is for grades K to 8, and uh, we have to stick, stick with that. And then parents must, uh, are not permitted on the field. And once a student leaves the field, they are not permitted to return. Now, the only exception is if a kid has to go to the bathroom, okay, you don't have to make them pee themselves. Yeah. We have done that in Little League Baseball, um, intentionally <laughs> once in a while. It's my son, so it's okay. No. <laughs> And those coaches in the room. <laughs> but uh, all that to say, we um, we allow kids to go to the bathroom, so that's okay to do that. And uh, what happens is you just take them to the gate, and there's a bathroom runner that just runs them back and forth from the bathroom. So um, other than that, there is there are bouncy houses. There's fun games, everything out in the parking lot, everything like that. They can do that before. Uh, and, and everything, but once they come onto the field, they can't keep going out and back and getting food and getting all that, you know, doing all the fun stuff. They have to do the field and then they can go back out and do that after it's all, all completed. In case you have those questions. Uh, only volunteers with appropriate clearances may serve on the field and in the game area. Okay, now there's a paper on your table right here. Uh, appropriate uh, clearances, meaning the, the FBI fingerprint clearances. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, but this year, we're not, it's not a requirement to have FBI fingerprint clearances. Correct, Cindy Dell? Right. Correct. So for this particular year, as long as you have urban impacts, you know, clearances, you've been volunteering the program, which as I look across here, you're all good. Um, unless Andrew tells you otherwise. Uh, <laughs> you're good to go. But it, moving into the future, this is important for you to know. If you've lived in the state of Pennsylvania for 10 consecutive years, I mean, you never moved out and came back, uh, but you've lived here 10 years in a row, you've had a place of residence here 10 years in a row, you can kind of jump over the fingerprint clearance process and save about $37 or something like that if you sign this, uh, this form here. Okay? And so if you have any questions about that, uh, after you read it and talk to Andrew or, or, or Cindy or Nancy, and uh, they can help you answer questions with that. But if you, what I'm asking you to do is, if you are here tonight and you have lived here for 10 plus consecutive years, if you can sign that tonight, then uh, we'll just have that on your, on your file. Okay. Second, field and game volunteers. Field and game volunteers will be given gold t-shirts to wear to easily identify them as volunteers who may directly interact with kids. With the new state laws, anybody who doesn't have their, their appropriate clearances cannot engage with students. And the terms are really vague. We don't really, you know, we, we just have to go with what the law says. Um, so they're, they're vague, but they're specific, if that makes sense. They're vague in that, uh, you know, kind of, means like, look at a kid and like you're interacting with them. But what we what we've decided as an organization is that the way that the law is defined, what we're saying is that direct contact with kids. You know, if your if your role and your responsibility within the program engages with children, you have to have the clearances. So for the football clinic, for example, that would mean any field volunteer period. Okay. Um, meaning Parking lot people, okay, uh, food people, all those people, they're, they're out in the perimeter, they're okay within, you know, within, the, uh, within the law, but they're going to be identified differently. The field volunteers are going to get a, an actual urban impact t-shirt to kind of specify that, hey, these people are the cleared people to be on the field engaged and interacting with, with kids. So if you're a field volunteer, you get a t-shirt, 
all the other volunteers, if you've been to the clinic in the past, we have these pennies uh, that are they basically kind of throw over a t-shirt. So we ask you to wear a white t-shirt and then you'll throw the, the penny on. So if you're a registration, a food, a, um, a uh, parking lot, what else? Send me anything else. If you're also, if you're in the gaming area, if you are in the, you know, helping run the games for the little children, you also have to have your clearances and, uh, and have your, your t-shirt on. Any questions about that? Sorry, Seth, there are some, are there some people that maybe will start with registration and switch to field, so they'll wear their urban impact shirt and then a thing? Yeah, if you're ever going to be on the field, then you'll need the clearances and the t-shirt. So yeah, just have them wear both. I mean, they, they can do registration with the t-shirt, they just can't do the field with the pen. Okay. Right. A couple more important things to remember. Urban Impact staff will wear black t-shirts. So if you're trying to identify a staff, that member, staff member that day, they'll wear black t-shirts. It'll say staff on the back. Cool print. Um, another thing is that everybody will be in the bleachers for the program. So when the program time comes, 